Welcome to Lights, Camera, Barstool, episode 102 of season two of LCB. It's movie time. Jeff Delo, Ken Jack, Gooch. Uh, Chris not able to see Guardians 3, so Chris will be back next week. Just the three of us. Very Guardians-heavy episode, as expected. Uh, will Poulter plays Adam Warlock. We interviewed him last week. Uh, so we have an interview with him. Really, really fun interview mm-hmm. uh, with Will Poulter. He was someone I hope we have back soon. Uh, and then, of course, reviewing the movie, uh, the latest release in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it kind of kicks into gear now, 2023, in terms of movies. There's, there's a lot yeah. of big ones about to all drop. I haven't, back uh, I haven't listened to the Will Poulter interview yet. Did you guys, are you the ones who brought up the word himbo to him? No, someone before <laughs> us got to it. Although we did, we did, I did like reference what a himbo is. I was like, yeah, you're essentially a big baby man. And he was just like. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Did you ask him my uh, question? No, I didn't. We didn't get to it. There wasn't that type of vibe. That, that's a vibe type of question. <laughs> I wanted to ask him what it was like to sit in Elizabeth De- Debicki's lap. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the only woman near as tall, tall as him on that movie. Yeah, that like Batista maybe even. Not really a spoiler, but yeah, that <laughs> that made me laugh out loud when mm. just sitting there like a little boy, <laughs> a little baby man. Um, so we will review Guardians, uh, but a bunch of. Not a bunch of trailers, but a, but a couple of trailers. We had one drop this morning. Uh, we're recording this on Monday the 8th, and that is a new trailer for Oppenheimer. Um, probably the final trailer, unless they delay the movie again, which or they just delay it in general, which I still think could happen. I think I really we're, probably, we're, 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 we're probably to a point where it, we're close to it not happening. Like They're probably at the cutoff, but it's still kind of crazy they're going to go th- – that is just going to release with Barbie two weeks after Mission Impossible, but um, it might moved up a, a few days, which I think makes a slight difference. It moved yeah. up like three or four days, I think. Uh, still a crazy ass cast. You see a lot of people in the trailer. Some we haven't seen. We haven't seen Florence Pugh yet. Uh, we see the first look at Albert Einstein, which kind of. <laughs> Took me out of it for a second. <laughs> I think he was in the why. first trailer, but yeah, he was like, he's like, you see him and you're just like, that's it's that goofy ass dude with the tongue that go crazy. Yeah. We know him. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kill- Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr. Good look at Robert Downey Jr. Florence mm. Pugh, Robbie Malik, Benny Safdie, uh, Josh Hartnett, Kenneth Branagh, uh, Dane DeHaan, which by the way, did you, we'll talk about. Kenneth Branagh's tra- Kenneth Branagh's trailer. Even though I was saying it like that with a fucking like a twang, um, he's got his new. Did we talk? We didn't talk about the new or call Perot movie, did we? No. Did you see it before Guardians? The trailer? God no. Yeah, they played it for us. Um, Alden Ehrenreich, Jack Quaid, Jason Clark, Josh Peck, Alex Wolf, Tony Josh Goldwyn. Peck. That sounds like a modern day influencer, Josh Peck. Jack, you know that's I mean? the name of the, the, the com- a comedy collective that Tim and Eric helped start with Michael Josh Sarah. Peck. Um, or Alex Wolf, saying. yeah. Uh, James Darcy. Darcy. Uh, who else? Gary Oldman, who I don't think we've seen Oldman, have we? Uh, No. Casey okay. Affleck. Wait, Oldman's in this movie? Dude, Oldman, Casey Affleck, back to back. What a crew. He plays Truman? They should have He plays back. arguably the one of the biggest roles. In the, well, maybe not. That, that may not be the exact focus. Though, you get a sense in the trailer that, that Congress and politicians will play a pretty solid part in this mm-hmm. um, <laughs> in terms of the decision and all that. So maybe, maybe it's a big role. I don't know. But I can see it being be, kind of a side role. It's going to be roasting Oppenheimer. I mean, <laughs> Gary Oldman is pl- is collecting every single World War II leader, like yeah, like seriously. Thanos Infinity stuff. He's got Churchill, him. I think he's played other ones too. He's, all, and I other mean, like intelligence movies. You know, Everyone, got- for the most part, seems to have a side role, except for Damon and Killian Murphy, and maybe mm. Emily Blunt, who plays Oppenheimer's wife, Kitty Oppenheimer. Mm. But it's it seems very Damon and Murphy heavy. Yeah, which um, is good. Cool. Tra- I mean, I'm I'm very excited for this. Like, I I do think it's going to be a very emotional, intense movie. Um, it seems like in terms of like the narrative arc, it'll be a lot of like doom, doom, doom. Yay, we did it! But then like doom. Like I would imagine that's 
yeah what happened and then truman calling oppenheimer like an unbelievable pussy and telling him to don't let that little whiny man baby in my in my office ever again or whatever the quote was oppenheimer when his bomb designed to kill millions of people the <laughs> actual them. meme was much funny i know you can't say it but it was much funny i can't believe this happened <laughs> so, oh, the, oh, i can't say i can't <laughs> say that that's so bad uh but yeah no that's that's gonna be funny i still like seeing like you're mentioning Einstein's being like, it really ignites the atmosphere. And just <laughs> yeah. like the full mustache hairpiece combo. It's just, it's, it's to tough. See. He's just not somebody. Looks they, like didn't get a, they didn't get like a crazy famous American actor, even British actor. They got a stage actor, Tom Conti. Um, yeah, fucking Kevin James playing Oppenheimer. Scottish actor. Um, yeah, they, they didn't get anyone like crazy recognizable, which I don't think they could have done. I think that could have been like a real – he's just somebody that you're not used to – like it's, it's just funny. It's like you've seen Nixon, right? You've seen Truman. You've seen um, – how many times have we seen uh, Churchill? Like you've seen all these different historical figures, but for something that's so weird about seeing Albert Einstein. Yeah. Hey. You, n- you never see him in anything. I, can, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen him on on like uh, any screen representation. Let's ever. let's saw him. We look it up. Was he in Albert? Bill and Ted's? Uh, he was definitely in one of those time travel movies. Yeah, I feel like he was in one of those. I can't remember though, but that's that's very. It was very shocking to see him. Like <laughs> they played that trailer with Guardians. I was like, what the fuck? Let's see. Transformers: Dark of the Battle Moon. Of the Smithsonian. You're missing one of the best ones. He's Transformers Dark of the Moon, an Autobot character named Q Sports is an Einstein inspired head design with yes. a new hairstyle and dapper yes. mustache. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Holmes and Watson? What? I didn't remember that. Back uh, to the future. That, that I might be making that up in my head, but That's, that seems right. Let's say I Back to the Future doesn't seem right. That. It was just a dog. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. The Star Wars character Yoda's wrinkles are modeled after Einstein to give the impression of exceptional wow. intelligence. See, I, I could have fully believed that Albert Einstein gets, like, punched or something in Holmes and Watson. Mm, or yes. he, like, he, like, rips a real nasty fart or something. Like, that, that would have really <laughs> – that would have made – see, like, that just completely makes sense. I don't know why. <laughs> that, that honestly is way funnier than anything that was in <laughs> Holmes and Watson. That, yeah. that, that, you are spot on. That that movie was so fucking stupid. I don't – I actually – the the only thing the reason why I said punch is because the only thing I truly remember from that movie is when there's like a boxing match in that movie. Yeah, they like did Moriarty. try to rip off the the Sherlock Holmes fight scene from like the first one with Robert Downey Jr. And right, it's just not really right. as funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a what an unfunny movie Holmes Dog and Watson movie. was. What do you what do you all think the because uh, I'm starting to get this vibe from Oppenheimer that it'll be one of Nolan's slower movies. Oh, absolutely. Maybe little, oh, yeah. What do you think the public reaction is going to be to, if it is like that? Like, do you think the public's going to eat it up, or you think it's going to be? I don't know. I, I could see it being the same reaction that that uh, Dunkirk got. Okay, because mm. because Dunkirk for the mo- I mean Dunkirk was like very intense, right? Like because of it being a war movie, there was a lot of death. Like Dunkirk was very intense, but it was a slower burn in terms of like the events happening. But there yeah. was like a constant building of dread and tension. I don't know if there will be on this. Um, I think there, I think there will be because like the underlying story, like what they're doing, they're building the fucking atom bomb. But like, I don't know. It was, there's like bits of action cut into. I don't know how you do that with Oppenheimer. You could talk about like the rival atomic programs in Germany and Japan that were working on. They were doing like hard water or whatever. But like, I don't know how you do that in an action heavy way, other than like intelligence breaking stuff, which would be cool. That would be awesome. It does look like we're gonna get one of the classic, uh, you know, in heist movies when they go around and they they pick up the. Uh, the whole gang and it's like fuck yeah. it, I'm, I'm in mm-hmm. it looks like we're gonna get one of those scenes where they're just recruiting the scientists at different colleges and i can't <laughs> yeah. wait for that i'm <laughs> just going to boston college matt damon you know what fuck it i'm in <laughs> that's a good the general right or there's a cool line in that where he's like why are you still a major and he's like they're gonna make me a general for this or something like <laughs> that that was that's a good line it's a great episode of uh rick and morty when they do the the heist <laughs> just like mm-hmm. 10 heists in a row and they just keep getting new crews I don't think Gucci knows he's the only Rick and Morty guy on the pod. Am I the only one? Are you guys not Rick and Morty guys? I never got I've, around I've, to I've it. I've watched enough to say yeah. I've seen it, but I have not made it all the way not through. Smart Rick and Morty. Not smart enough. Not smart enough. You wouldn't get it. I know. I always wanted to because everyone I know loves it, but I just never got into it. Don't know why. Love cartoon comedies. You know what has retroactively made me uh, not find Rick and Morty as funny as I always have? 
can take a guess. What What do you think? <laughs> what the fucking Shizuan sauce saga? No, no, I've gotten past that. No, the MCU shows being so fucking unfunny mm. and not like having none of that charm. And mm. like they've just been, Marvel's just been hiring that writer's room for years now. And the only one that I think has really worked out is our, our good our boy, uh, yeah, Michael Waldron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very. This is gonna be a funny review today. I'm very interesting to talk about this movie at a wider yeah. length. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's much more on Oppenheimer. I'm very excited for it. I, I think they've done a great job per usual with Nolan stuff is n- not showing a ton, but giving you a sense of like the movie a little bit. I mean, it, there. Th- this is one of those things where it's not nearly as mainstream as Mission Impossible or fucking Barbie, but I, I think if 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 you're a fan of Nolan, you're a fan of these big like. Oscar contending blockbusters like this is I mean, what more can you ask for here? If you had to pick one right now, gun to your head, are you going to Oppenheimer or are you going to Barbie first? I'm going to Oppenheimer. I think it's, I'm not even. Yeah, that's, I think just mood wise, that's I, the best I do way wanna, to do it. Yeah, I do want to do the back to back. Yeah, I think you do. I think, okay, and this is another thing I want to do. If they, if they shift the dates around, if they're still releasing within a date, like a week of each other, I say we should make a point to still watch them back to back. Like wait until yeah they re- like they're both released or both out and then watch them back to back anyway. As long as it's not an egregious amount of time between. Yeah, no, them. I'm 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 down with that. It'll leave a week I, open. I'm for excited. Us to- what a no. We'll what review a, what a Evil Dead. Two weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh, Evil Dead Rises. Yeah, um, I still don't watch that. I'm behind on that. <laughs> I mean, I I did see Evil Dead Rises. It's 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 fine. Mm. It's not the original Evil Dead movies. It's just it's, it's so far from that at this point, but it's so enjoyable. There's our Evil Dead review. Now you guys Gooch can a huge Ash of the Evil Dead guy. Uh, Ash and the Evil Dead. That's his big. <laughs> I want to watch it. I do. Lo- I like Evil Dead a lot. Obviously, I like Bruce Campbell a lot, too. Brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because always growing and changing how you cope with maybe trauma, traumatic events, things that may be going on in your life. Everyone has a different way of doing it, but it's hard to figure that out if you're not talking to someone. And therapy is a great way to do that. Uh, deepening your self-awareness, understanding of things that are going on. Sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do or how we should react or what's the best way to react to cope uh, or just handle things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. And that's the big thing. I don't like going to therapy, doing it online. Great. You can do chats. You can do phone calls. You can do video calls. You don't have to see anybody if you don't want to. Uh, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash light. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash light. Get 10% off your first month. Big thing. Next up is um, – a. <laughs> I didn't know – I didn't know this was a thing until I saw the trailer, and that's the new Gran Turismo movie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that got us a lot. I remember when it first got announced, I was excited just because I I read the first part of the headline. Right, it's like Neil Blomkamp for directing new movie, and I'm like, yeah. And then it's like Gran Turismo adaptation, and I'm like, I'm gonna jump off a bridge. Like, I, you're one of the best sci-fi minds in the entire world, and he's making a video game movie for racing cars alternate headline neil blomkamp has not made a movie in 10 years needs a paycheck <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Jeez, it's probably gonna be good too that's the bad part but it's like i'd i'd rather a great sci-fi or even a middling sci-fi movie from him versus like the best gran turismo movie i don't know it's, it's based far. on a true story what is that um a guy jan martin bro he's uh 31 now he's from britain He's a professional racing driver competing in the Japan uh, Japanese Super GT series, and he he was a Gran Turismo player that became a driver, like as an aspiring driver. That's it's, the story. But like every single person in the NBA now has played 2K. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is yeah. this is for all you F1 nerds out there. This is not good for your sport. <laughs> no, like, hey, just a guy was about just a Gran Turismo player games. whose gaming skills won a series of Nissan sponsored video game competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. This. The person I, I went to go see the movie with someone, they turned me this they said, I've, I've never been less interested mm. in a trailer. And I honestly was like, I, I think like in terms of the last year, in terms of like bigger, bigger movies, like we, I mean, like, don't like, see, I, I can't say it's number one because then you could just throw Winnie the Pooh blood and honey at me and I'd be like, oh, yeah, mm. well, okay. But 
like in terms of like bigger releases and like big studio, big names in this, you got David Harbour, Orlando Bloom, Jaiman Hansu. Oh my God, I couldn't be less interested in this movie. Mm. It's like a bummer again, because I do think this is going to be good. It's just like, I don't know. It's Gran Turismo. Like F1's hot, I guess. And that's why they're trying to like capitalize on this market while they still yeah. can. Um, I do like the, I was just looking at the wiki, the headline of it from gamer to racer. Usually gamers and races don't mix well. That's, that's, a, that's a combination you want to avoid at all costs. <laughs> but I mean, this is a different type of deal. I don't know. Uh, Miami yeah, yeah. basketball players love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. Forgot about him. I just don't know. I, I don't. See, I'm just looking at the development too. Kaczynski was originally supposed to direct this. He'd be perfect for something like this. Who? You know what I mean? Joseph Kaczynski did <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Okay. Like something like that where he could bring speed oh, to yeah. screen. He would have been great. I just want Neil to do sci do there's, legit there's sci-fi. Come on, man. Such a corny element to it in the trailer where it's like David David Harbour is Oh, the, you're a video game nerd? Yeah, the Bet guy will teach you pick, that on your chair with your yeah, He's gotta pick the winner. Orlando Bloom is like backing him. He plays like uh the marketing executive, like a motorsport marketing executive. Um <laughs> Dude, they're uh, I mean, again, based on a real thing, so like whatever, but there's such a mm. corny sports story like like just believe him. Like this guy yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. He can't race Dude. video games. Like, oh, like the just, training uh, montage was laugh out loud funny because it was like you know, like most training montages, they're doing like shit that you couldn't even like think, think of doing. Of doing. Laps. They have these guys like running outside mm-hmm. on a yeah. row machine, and it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. got such a, a corny car cliche like trailer thing, which is funny because if you saw Guardians, you probably saw the fast. 10 trailer as well where it's like whatever song is on will the the like the like the like a beat or something in the song that will that will like line up with them shifting a gear in the car yeah. classic cliche that was in this trailer and then the worst the, the part of the trailer that really got me that i was like this stinks is when he's he's like in the car and he's like I've raced this track before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's on Rainbow Road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like if Mario would have said that, like, oh. I, yeah. I think the only line I didn't, the only line that pissed me off, like, badly was David Harbour being like, you you, you crash out you know, in your game, you just press restart. You crash yeah. out here, you die. And it's just like, oh, all right, dude. Like, ah, we, get, like, we get the idea of your character. We understand yeah. it. Yeah. It's also not automatic death either. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is this is made by Sony, right? Yes, PlayStation Studios, brother. Do they have no other racing games they could have picked? Because Gran Turismo has not been popular since PlayStation Two. Are they not like the racing franchise in video games? No, like what's above it? There's better racing games, right? I think they're the number. One, they're the top dog. Like, I mean, there's Mario part- Mario Kart's the top dog. Uh, well, I guess like if sport video. You know what I mean? Need for Speed. That stuff has been defunct. Yeah, that's been gone for longer. <laughs> This, let's look be, best racing games not it's gonna be like gran turismo uh, forza yeah this will join the playstation cinematic universe which includes uncharted and ratchet and clank ratchet and click i just i, I love that first ratchet and clank game i can't even try and act like i'm better than for the banjo kazooie movie see this this game i've never played this but Wreckfest. that would be a good movie you should be doing twisted metal honestly I know they're doing that with like Anthony Mackie with a series or something, but whatever. The uh, you know what they should make a game, I mean, not a movie, but like maybe an animated series or or just another rebooted game. But like the Jack and Daxter games, I used to love those. Yeah, those were sick. Jack one, Jack two, Jack three. The the three one we had all the racing elements of it. It was so much fun. Yeah, just uh, I don't know. I who's this? I guess fans of Gran Turismo. I'm sure this will do like well internationally or something. It's it's F one, you know what I mean? Like F one's gonna be it's 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 super popular, so it's just gonna play. But, I guess. but the, are these like it is F one, right? I'm not like, I'm not no, a racing no, guy. So. It, it's it's not. Oh, well, I guess fast car F one is yeah, just in my brain I mean, like same thing. Like, I, yeah. I wasn't gonna try to be like a I'm not, I wasn't gonna be like a dick and like well actually it's not. But it's like it's I know like you're saying the yeah. right thing here. It's like Jeff, it, Jeff's just gonna wait for us to be done recording and he's no, gonna I mean, it's, it's like it's not. Off, it's offline. GT racing is is different than f1 but it, it you're not like you're completely right though like it's, i think the popularity of f1 correct. is what is going to play towards this being uh getting viewers absolutely correct it, it's yeah. it's playing off it's playing off the popularity of like just racing in general and not like yeah. stock car racing like nascar i like how this is all european and they're just like yeah here's our pitmaster david harbour what is this <laughs> just, 
the most American guy you could possibly get. It does not look like he knows what he's doing. When uh, is this set to come out? Um, uh, this is this August one 11th. is August 11th. What's it coming out against? Oh, it's going to come out uh, just a month, like after Fat uh, Fast X comes out this month. So it's got to yeah. yeah fast is fast is next two week. weeks. Two weeks. I texted. I texted Chris too. I was like, "Brother, you got nine to watch in the next week. Have fun. <laughs> Good luck so with you your brain. Any of them? Good luck with your, he has not seen any of them. Good luck with your brain not rotting after watching nine of them <laughs> in, in ten days. Jesus, it's 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 such a tease too. If you've never seen the fast movies. Yeah, to watch them start to finish because you're gonna hit that middle section and be like, "Yo, pretty good," and then all of a sudden it just gets it just goes away. Yeah, my hot take is Hobbs and Shaw is the best one. I love Hobbs. I really, really ah, like Hobbs and Shaw a lot. Five is five is awesome, and man, I, I, I Fast Seven is is I just think really well done. Like, I, it, it's crazy that a, a clunky doofus franchise handled the death of like an actual person. So well, mm-hmm. with like at least some level of finesse. Like the, yeah. I, I, I teared up at the end of that movie, and I mean he act, he actually died, so that's a massive reason why. I'm not gonna pretend that like that character, like Brian, was like a character that I, that like moved me emotionally. But like yeah. they they did a really good fucking job with that. Like they really they, they truly did. Yeah, um, and then it just all fall. It just falls completely off. I, I like though, like how Hobbs and Shaw and Fast to a lesser degree did this too. But Hobbs and Shaw really embraced the fucking craziness. Like they had like Captain America, like super soldier fighting Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson's holding yeah. onto a helicopter with his bicep. Like that's just that was also a ripoff of Captain America. Oh, I just put that together. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I mean, I love how they embraced that shit. And Idris Elba was also a great villain. Yeah, no, I, Hobbs and Shaw was awesome though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, other trailer. You guys, you guys didn't see it. I guess. D- did you see it, Gooch? The Haunting in Venice trailer. I think I did. I think it played with Guardians. Yeah. So the the third movie in the Urkel Perot saga. Um. After. The, uh. Fucking night, night on the train or whatever it's called. Uh, murder. <laughs> murder, <laughs> murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, which Death on the Nile was plagued a little bit by the fact that Army Hammer was in it. <laughs> Um, that was rough. There's a new one, Haunting in Venice, which is a straight up horror movie. Um, must solve the murder of a guest at a seance. He attended. Like there's this. like there's it's it, it's a pretty like jump scary trailer. It's very different. Um, people in the movie. There's a surprising person in this movie. I'm uh, ready. Um, names that you'd recognize. Actually, not a ton that you'd recognize. Uh, Michelle Yeoh's in it. Uh, Jamie Dornan, Tina Fey is in the movie. That makes sense. Not really, yeah. but <laughs> uh, which I which I like. That's kind of cool. I like. Speaking mean. of Tina Fey, I saw one of your one of your favorites this morning, Jeff. Oh, saw, yeah. saw Jenna Maroney at Starbucks. Oh really? Yeah, I opened the almost, door for. for I'll ask out. a question about her actress for um, the trivia match for Ken Jack today, but didn't do it. Oh. What time? Thirty Rock guy. That's the only thing I know her from, though. I couldn't tell you one other thing. Yeah, no, I she's from. Cannot remember. Vacation. She's very funny though. She's, uh, she's, she's a young, a young. I must call her young lad. She's a young lad in the Vacation franchise. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a straight up horror trailer. It's interesting. Based I mean, on Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. There's a there's a great quarterback in the cast. I don't know if you saw that. Kyle Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Allen's in the cast. You think you think Agatha Christie's rolling over in the old grave when these movies come out? They stink, yes. dude. Why do they keep making them? <laughs> she was still alive. She'd honestly say, fuck this franchise, and she would be a big Knives Out person. Knives Out poker face. Yeah. I wonder, what, what was the ratings in the last one? Couldn't have been good. I mean, Gal Gadot was in it. <laughs> just fucking box office. Or not box office poison, but just like critical fucking poison. Um, I recall us sixty two for death in the Nile. Liking Nile-Nile. you gave it a fifty eight. I gave it a sixty three. I recall us liking murder a hair more. I didn't see death. I was so bored by murder. I was like, no, murder Dude, was death in the Nile made forty million dollars. <laughs> so why are and they the first one made? One? What was that? I got that was, that was, was that right when the Johnny death. No, yeah. it, wasn't. it was twenty twenty two. The first one made a hundred. 
uh, like almost on the dot. And then the second one makes 45. It's like, oh, yeah, fuck, man. We got to make another one of these. That's. These are MGM, too, right? These went so far away. I'm yeah, to that's, my that's domestic, right? We got, we got them. Uh, that's domestic, though, because I think I'm looking at Murder. Murder says it made 350 worldwide, but regardless. Okay. And, then the, all, and then all of that worldwide gross is from, like, England. No one else in any other country is watching that shit. It's fucking red-faced fools. Yeah, Death on the Nile. I mean, it, it definitely it did not have the hype of the first. I mean, the first they're, – they're making them like they're a fucking success. That's crazy. Yeah. Just keep pumping them out. I don't get it. Yeah, $137 million after making three fifty worldwide the first one. Well, like, only, made, be, only made $40 million off its budget. It's fucking – I just uh, – Kenneth Branagh, as much as I liked Belfast, I'd be cool if he never directed a movie again. Fine. Yeah, I like him as an actor. I'd be fine if he never directed a movie for the rest, like with the rest of time. Oh, I heard one of our coworkers makes a uh, cameo in this one. Oh God, who? So, old Riggsy <laughs> comes out during the seance. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> does, does yeah. One of our that is inside true. baseball Sports play. Um, Riggs is in the new Agatha Christie movie. Man, going through his his filmography as a director, it's like Thor, not really good. Like Thor, Jack, or Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, Thor the bad one, then Thor the worse one. Yes, exactly. The uh, Cinderella, which is good. I like Cinderella. That's that was Cinderella was Cinderella was, yeah. was an okay adaptation. The Lily that James one. Like, yeah, that was, yeah, I like that one. All is true. That do you remember that he did that Shakespeare movie where he's like yes. all dressed up in the prosthetics? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Artemis Fowl. <laughs> Oh, that's he did uh, foul. That's right. That's bad. Uh, that, <laughs> that was, was bad. What one. a stinky turd that was. Oh my god. Damn, that was such a. It was, it was murder, Artemis Fowl, Belfast, then Death on the Nile. Now it's just like the diamond in a literal giant chunk of shit for his filmography. Oh, I must good continue actor. making movies. <laughs> yeah, just keep acting, man. You're a great actor. Um. I think that's it. That's it on news. That's it on news. We have. I mean, is there anything else? Oh, so let's let's just get into succession. Um, the writers, the writing. Oh yeah, yeah. We, writers strike. I mean, what what is there to say about it? I mean, we're pro writers. I think across the board, and yeah, they got a lot of cool stuff. Going, like what's happening? The SAG after contract is up in June, and I think that that is also going to impact this somehow. Um, I don't know how. I can't pretend to be like some expert in the talks on this at all, but I'm very pro writer and hope to get all the money they deserve because I didn't realize that they weren't making like anything off of streaming residuals. Yeah. Which is crazy. Because like I remember one, I saw one writer tweeting about it. Like he wrote on a show that had no life really as a sitcom on, on network television, but then when it was gotten streaming, it took off and he gets nothing from that, which is kind of bullshit. Yeah. The, uh, the only thing I'll say is I hope he gets. Resolve soon because it's like, yeah, I want the writers to get paid, but every day they're off. You know, there's so many bad auxiliary <sighs> industries that are supported by filming and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. from craft services to everybody else is affected by it. All the grips, all the electricians. Yeah, it's not right. just the studio heads that are hurting. It's going to be like normal people. Um, and like the the idea, I see a lot of people be like, oh, well, writers haven't done anything original in years. The writers aren't the ones. Choice. The writers are not the ones that want to do these remakes and sequels and all this like reboots and stuff like that. Like writers want to write their own <laughs> shit. That's like every writer. Writer. We, we, like we live in an era off. where we live in an era where where like going nuts, going going real dummy over how good writing is on TV and like that's like whatever. Like say I guess maybe even if you want to blame incorrectly writers for like movies and sequels, we. we we live in an era where, where there's so much good fucking TV. You just don't search for it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like there's it's, like, it sucks that about, you do need to we're search for it. We're talking about a but... show in succession that is like considered writing like a master class. It's mm. yeah, it's, it's silly. Yeah, it's silly. Um, but yeah, speaking of succession, uh, the sixth episode, seventh, seventh episode. Yeah. Uh, because then there's yeah, there's three left. Uh, it's election eve episode. Spoiler alert: if you've not seen the new episode of Succession, um, another just awesome episode. And there's a really, a really like sad scene at the end, like a real kind of gut punch. If you're not that, I mean, who is at this point still like shipping Tom and Shiv? Like they're you, you still, you still liked it. You still Dude, I love, oh, I love a toxic relationship. 
I love it. I was there for five seasons of Chuck and Blair, baby. It's just it's it's a really good. It's a great example yet again. And we'll we'll talk about with Guardians. We'll talk about I don't know, and I, I, maybe some of it's earned, some of it's not. Like like in terms of like saying goodbye to characters that you do love, even though you hate these characters, like you're supposed to hate them in like a loving mm-hmm. way. It was sad. You're like, oh fuck, like that truly is. You because you've always felt that they could get back together. They've always had really bad shit. Ever starting with when she asked for like an open marriage at um at their on their wedding day, then like the talk on the beach at the end of season two, season three, the betrayal, all that. And <clears throat> you know, it's always been kind of a give and take, or even, you know, Shiv would have jealousy and anger over Tom maybe flirting with somebody, despite the fact that she proposed everything, controlling. But then, you know, he he betrayed her as much as possible at the end of last season. You're still so you're like, damn, like they're fucking done. Like they're they're done so. She legitimately said, I, I don't care about you. I don't like anything. Um, and then the end scene was was when he's walking through the party going like, all right, time to go. Mm-hmm. Like, Good night, Tom. Fuck Tom. Like it just it was it was a really great fucking scene. It was it was an awesome way to end that episode. It was it was again, it's a gut punch. Yeah, it was. You can't say you'll be a bad mother. It's like you can't say that. <laughs> you mm-hmm. just can't. Like that was the that was the dagger to the heart. That was it. It's also true, and she's, she's should be like just on everything we know about her as a character. I wouldn't want her to be my mom. Mother, motherhood changes changes a woman. You never know. Well, she they're could. also filthy rich, and they'd be the people that would just let you be raised by a nanny or. Whatever. I mean, she's got to be a better mom than T- Kendall's a dad. Rava, yeah. <laughs> oh and my Kendall's god! A dad, I, or then their own mom was a mom. He, mom yeah, he. Up. Right when maybe you're about she'll to be a good mom because her mom was so was admittedly terrible. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Kendall's right when, a deadbeat dad, though. Dude, yeah. Dude, right when you're about to forget that Kendall actually has a family. Yeah. <laughs> I've, exactly. I've, I've never believed anyone less in movie or TV than saying that they're doing their work for their kids than Kendall saying, like, I'm doing it for them. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you fucking no, not liar. Just, not just doing it for them. Doing it for them to make the world safer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a uh, – when's the last time that we had seen Kendall's kids? Like The end of last two? season when he end almost last died. last season? When he oh, almost died, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Logan is talking to. Do you know what his son's name is? Always a fun one. God no, I don't know the one that he said. Iverson. <laughs> That's Iverson. right. Oh yeah, I, I knew you would know that. when you heard it because it is. You're like every time you hear like what the fuck. Uh, Logan is sitting on a bench with Iverson in Italy um, after Iverson Kendall Roy. had like been found drowning, I guess. Yeah. Um. And and like he fell into the pool or whatever. So mm. that was the last time we we had seen them. Um, I didn't even know, I didn't realize his daughter was old enough to be in fucking high school or middle school having thoughts about anti cable news, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of surprising. Um, yeah, f- fun episode of, of like political back dealings. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess I didn't realize or I kind of forgotten that one of the Pierce relatives was working with, um, was working with, uh, um, Connor on his campaign. Mm hmm. The one who looks like actually Albert Einstein. Yeah. By the um, party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe Bollins had one thought on succession. He had sent me this morning. He sent me a screenshot from the, the succession Reddit. And it was the Tom and Shiv scene. And the person's like, I'm speechless. Best scene of the episode. Hands down. They're coming for those Emmys. And Joe said, it's so funny. When people say that they're coming for an Emmy. It's like saying, man, LeBron is coming for that SB. It's like, <laughs> like, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> that's the idea of this who- show. <clears throat> I do think, in terms of Emmys, it's still probably Kieran Ted Colton. Lasso. Oh God, that's I still haven't watched. That, I haven't guys, heard a guys, fucking word about this other than from you saying not guys, worth it. Guys, it is. It's it bad. Is dire. No, it's, I, I've 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 wa- I, I've watched it. My mom actually, my mom, and my sister are starting. My mom, my mom, and sister just binged Gilmore Girls for like three fucking years. And they finally finished Great it, show. which is odd because I like my sister's seen it. Anyway, they're so like, watching a new show, and she's like, "I don't really want like a bump." She was going to watch Succession because my dad loves Succession. She's like, I, I watch, and she's like, "I want a, like not not a, a bummer of a show." I'm like, "Well, don't watch Succession then. That's yeah. just not it's not it." She's like, "Well, what about Ted Lasso?" And I was like, "Yeah, but I was like, it's good. The first two seasons are fun." I was like, "I was like, I got to tell you what, I've just started watching the third one, and I, I don't like. It makes me not want. It's like makes me not want somebody to watch." Ted Lasso right now. Mm. It's awful. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. It's some of the worst 
it's one of the biggest drop offs in riding I've ever seen. I don't know what happened. Who left that rider's room? I guess Bill Lawrence stepped away to a degree to focus on shrinking, which is fantastic. But holy shit. The there's episode just, will just, a, it'll just stop and then they'll do like a PSA on whatever social yeah, issue yeah. they try to touch on. The, the nice thing about the first season was that there was no expectation. It was based on a fucking commercial for NBC Sports for the Premier League. Like there mm. was just no, they didn't, they were just making a show that they thought was nice, charming, funny, whatever. And then the opinions rolled in and everyone's like, oh, I love this. This is so inspirational. This is like this quote, this, this, this. Ted Lasso should fucking speak to the U.S. football, you know, U.S. men's national team before the World Cup. It's almost like they heard the feedback and they're like, "Hey, we do that well. Let's fucking crank it up to eleven." Yeah, yeah, right. Like that's what it feels like, especially this season. Maybe not as much too, but this season really feels like that. Like they've taken it's not even bad feedback. People love the show, and they rightfully so. It's a fu- it's a nice show. It's a very fun show. But it's like they took the good feedback. And they're like. Like, let's just do more of that. And it just doesn't work that way. It doesn't stay true to itself. The only clip I had seen was the one where they were talking about, like, nudes on the phones or whatever. Yeah, that was last week's episode. Yeah, and I saw that scene being posted on Twitter. And I saw part of it, and I was like, this is, like, truly, painlessly bad. And I just looked up to find it again. And it's, it's like, half the people are people being like, this is preachy and fucking weird and, and bizarre and PSA, like you were saying. And this... <laughs> This person, one of the from a Ted Lasso ship account. Yes, the scene is preachy, but Ted Lasso's demographic is men between sixteen and thirty, so it needed to be preachy. Yeah, like, what are you talking mean, about? No one watches TV to be preached at. Like, no one wants that. Dude, it's the way they drop these. It's like the story will just be happening. Stop. An episode, will, and it'll just stop for this. That's what it, it seems happened, like, man. It happened in the week before too. They did. They did shut up and dribble, and they didn't even like change anything from like the LeBron, like Laura In- Ingram stuff. Like it was just a dead on recreation mm. and it was so bad. Sam is like screaming like the, the black player from Africa. He's like mm-hmm. screaming in the locker room about like everything going on in his life. And then all of a sudden he turns around and his dad is just standing there. His dad had just come from Africa, just standing there. It is, it is so bad. Mm. It's it, it, fucking it, Jason Sudeikis it, is liking <clears throat> tweets that say like the writing is bad. <laughs> it, it's the, the, the thing is, is that it, it always felt genuine, right? And it just doesn't. It just doesn't feel that way anymore. Like it, it always felt very subtle and genuine, and maybe not. Maybe subtle's not the right. Sometimes it's pretty. Like the Christmas episode was a great episode, but and that's like in your face. But again, it felt earned and genuine. Where this just feels like they're creating storylines for the sake of trying to make that moment and to be sweet and to be inspiring. Where that's just not why the first two seasons were good because it felt fucking relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels like a crowdsourced script from Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But back Um, to succession. Back to the good show. Sorry to. But yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know. I don't have much more to say on like the show. I mean, I think it's, again, it's like the the successions, it's so good at this point. We're like, it's like, what do you even fucking say? It's just just awesome. Well, let let me ask do you think this Matson stuff is just going to, do you think Matson is done for? Yeah, I I think, I do think, I think Matson's, I think Matson's been a ticking time bomb for a few episodes where it's, it is going to implode at some point. I, he is, he has too many like red, which is funny because they cause they use red flag in like the teeth next episode, like uh, uh, Roman does. But like, there's too many red flag weird things with that character for him to just, like. Nobody in this show has a bad thing that just goes by the wayside. Like if if it, if the alarms are going off in the show with the character, it usually explodes at some point. Um, mm-hmm. And like his comms director, like there's just there's there's something brewing with him that's going to be real bad. And now obviously at the end. Kendall wants to kind of reverse course and not even like avoid the sale, but flip it on its head. Reverse uh, Viking, baby. Yeah. Reverse Viking. We're going to pillage them. Um, dude, when he, when Shiv is pressing him for like, what, what do you mean? Funky numbers. And he's like, well, uh, India, uh, imagine if there were two Indias, <laughs> then it might make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I love him. He's fucking, what a great guest spot he's been for the season. No, he, he is fantastic. He has he has like a swagger about him. That's like even the way he jumped off the couch to hug Kendall when he was making that speech. Like he just there's he's playing the character in like a, a perfect piece of shit like founder CEO way. Yeah, yeah, and you could tell he played that was so like when someone's beat and they have no one nothing else to say and he's like, uh, your numbers are gay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, your yours were gay. Yeah, <laughs> dude, he's the best. Um, 
It's kind of the next episode is yeah. is the election episode too, mm-hmm. which looks fucking incredible. Um, the poll numbers coming in, the results. Uh, a type of episode we have not had with Succession yet, which is which is pretty cool. All the political episodes have typically been pretty great. There's very mm-hmm. it's, it's only it's like it's like two or three, but like the 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 hearings episode was amazing. Um, I, I do it, I do appreciate that they they dive into politics a bit, but they do stay away from it considerably. Mm-hmm. They could they could do a lot more, and they they know that. Well, there's no one there's a nice to. balance too because Shiv is so left wing. Roman's clearly more right wing. Kendall's very moderate in the middle. Kendall doesn't really care. Kendall just really cares about success and like what best benefits Money. him. Um, so like that's it's nice that they're able to balance that that way where you kind of get the hilarity on both sides. I hope we get a little Gil Evis next episode. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's your you remember the name? Yeah, he's he's a he's a great he's a great fucking character, and he's the vice presidential candidate to the um, Jimenez, who is the. Mm-hmm. Uh, Democratic candidate. We've not met. Uh, we've only met um, Jared Mankin. All right. I was trying to remember that. I was like, kept seeing him on TV and they showed him on the look ahead. And I was like, we haven't really met him. I don't even know if we will. I don't know if we will meet that candidate. I would imagine that if we, that if we, if we dive into that side, the, like the Democratic ticket, I, I would imagine we get Evis because we've just met Evis so many times. And mm-hmm. because Nate was in this last episode. Yeah. That final conversation, I really like that between Nate and Kendall. And he's like, dude we're not we're not logan and gill it's a good thing and mm-hmm. like you could kind of see the the wheels and kendall's head yeah. spinning he was like eh, maybe maybe i should stop trying to chase this yeah it, it's 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 gonna be i'm, I'm excited it, it's gonna be good and they're clearly tom is tom is ready to go tom is ready to fuck some shit up tom's not very happy yeah and also jerry's ready to fuck shit up too yeah J- yeah my god yeah. i was really hoping they'd reconcile this episode now they're okay. donezo too it's sad. over. That's sad. There's he's a shit. Gonna, he's not going to jerk off the, on the other side of her walls anymore. She liked it. <laughs> um, also, also every time, every time Tom, Tom is, and these, they're all funny, but in, within like the show itself, any joke Tom makes to um, Greg is hilarious. But anytime Tom makes a joke to anybody else, it's so cringeworthy. It's so uncomfortable. <laughs> Which is, I love that that with that character, like with with Greg, with a lesser, with somebody below him, he's hilarious, mm-hmm. and he's just like he's. But then anyone that has a mild bit of power over him, he just he cowers into just a, a cringeworthy loser. Greg is firing a hundred people, and Tom is behind him, like just acting like he's sucking a bunch of dicks. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> fake crying, so funny. Uh, um. All right, let's talk about Nuts.com. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means that there's something for everyone. Nuts.com offers plenty of gluten-free options, organic choices, and other diet-friendly products. Whether you're looking for something sweet, savory, or need to stock up on everyday cooking essentials, you're bound to find something to try. Shop a la carte anytime or opt into a hassle-free auto delivery so that you never run out of your favorite items. If you're already stocked up at home, they also sell directly to businesses. Snackless satisfaction knowing that quality is a top priority at Nuts.com. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships so that it reaches you deliciously fresh. Since 1929, they've been doing it the old-fashioned way. One taste, and you'll know the difference. Right now, Nuts.com is offering customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com slash lights. So go check out the delicious options at Nuts.com slash lights. You receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend twenty nine dollars or more. That's nuts dot com slash lights. All right, interview time. Will Poulter. Uh, in plenty of things, but specifically this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. He debuts as one of the biggest characters in the Marvel comics, uh, yet to to debut in the cinematic universe. Uh, I mean, in in in. I mean, he he's the wielder of the gauntlet in Infinity War and the Infinity uh, Gauntlet Saga in the comics. Um, but obviously, that will not be happening. No, it's no spoiler there. He will not be. He will not be killing Thanos. Um, maybe maybe he kills him in Secret Wars or whatever. Maybe Thanos comes back. It's very possible. Um, but he plays that character. We got to talking about that and much more. Uh, he was great. All right, we are joined for the second time ever 
in person, kind of. I'm out on the other side of the country. Uh, but Will Poulter, we we have we have a bone to pick with you off the top. But we're we do we're, have a bone. we're disappointed. We're just two years later. We're disappointed. Oh no! Uh, and it's very much related to this movie. It is. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Ken Jack and I saw it mere hours ago. Saw it yesterday, oh, opening yeah. night. Uh, we. And we, we, I think we, I don't even know if we mentioned Marvel to you last time. Probably not. It wouldn't have made sense, which I'll explain in a second. But uh, <laughs> our desk is littered with Infinity Gauntlets. We have oh, cool. Marvel Funko Pops. So we, we, they were like, are you going to be able to see Guardians by the Will Poulter interview? We were like, yeah, we're going to be able to see <laughs> the movie. Oh, yeah. legends. Thank you for watching it. Um, but we interviewed yeah. you two years ago. And we have this thing that happens with this podcast. Where within anywhere between ten and ten minutes and twenty four hours after an interview, some large news breaks with the about person, the actor. Yeah, we interviewed you about it was about dope sick. It was mm-hmm. September okay. twenty twenty one. Okay, and the next fucking day, you got announced as Adam Warlock. <laughs> The very was, next day. It was oh, gut ready. You, you couldn't have does like given us a hint. I'm sorry. I'm uh, so sorry. Yeah. That I I, I apologize. I have a tickle in my Adam's apple. You don't throw something. <laughs> Some kind a of subtle yeah, jam. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, that's tough. Yeah, I had to keep that secret for for a while. Mm-hmm. Um it was probably it was probably burning inside of me at that time. <laughs> so how we, close so we I mean you may not know the exact date, maybe you do. Mm-hmm. That way, we interviewed you September like twentieth ish, twenty twenty one. How long in advance had you? Did you have to keep that a secret and keep that under wraps? That's really interesting. I probably, I probably, <clears throat> well, I'd been auditioning since June of that year, mm-hmm. so it had been June, July, August, September. Um, very dyslexic, so I have to count the months <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, it, it, I'd been like three, four months of auditioning anyway. Um, so obviously kept a secret all through that process, but, but also didn't really legitimately think I was going to get the role either. Um, I think I probably found out very, very early September then that I'd actually got it. So I was, it sounds like I was waiting about three weeks. If, if the interview was on the 20th, sounds like maybe three weeks of, of secrecy. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one too. Cause it's not like, not, not to compare, I guess we are comparing. You're not like playing background character five. Like you're yeah. playing the character that has been, I'm sure you know, Teased, fan cast yeah. and, uh, rumored for, for so long that like it, that, that's a hefty one to not screw up and accidentally reveal. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, and, and, and with that comes you like a certain amount of pressure, but also like a genuine sense of responsibility, you know? Um, and I'm really, really grateful that his introduction comes at the end of like this kind of guardians trilogy as, at least as we know it. And, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's a real honor to get to play a character who, uh, has a weight of expectation around him, you know, and has fans who have, you know, preconceptions about, what he's going to be and how he's going to evolve. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for, for all of that. You were the start of a bad stretch. I think right after you, we had about three straight actors that we interviewed the next day. They were cast in Oppenheimer. I think like oh, it was something like yeah, that. that like, was three straight one. Oppenheimer actors that we interviewed. And wow. It was like Jason Clark. Oh, fuck. I forget the, I forget the other two, but it was, it was bad stretch. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm, you might, I'm, you I'm might pull your microphone just a, just a hair closer, by the way. Of course. Yeah. Like that. There you go. Perfect. There you yeah. go. Absolutely. Continue. Uh, yeah. Um, so we'd love to ask you a question that we asked. Uh, we interviewed Maria Bakalova a couple days ago. She's so funny. So she, talented. So funny. Great. Uh, by the way, is Cosmo. Cosmo is one of the best yeah. additions to the show along with yourself. Or the, the, I guess, franchise. <laughs> uh, but jumping into this world of Marvel with like an established cast that's already kind of like this tight knit family. Is that like kind of like a daunting thing to get into that world? Yeah, it's a good question. It was a kind of blend of things. I think um, on the one hand, you know, I was a little bit apprehensive, nervous about coming into not just a, a, a huge film, you know, and, and like a, a movie made on this kind of scale. Um, but I think also joining a cast that were so tight knit and have been together for 10 years, you, you, you know, you're the new kid and you just don't want to like get in the way or overstep the mark or kind of ruin any kind of chemistry or, or upset the balance of anything. I'm, I'm telling you like the legacy cast as they're referred to, they're full of, I mean, the nicest people and that's by design. Like James, I think, you know, kind of appointed them in those positions because he really cares about that. Mm -hmm. You know, he cares about having a kind of a fun, inclusive, uh, kind environment for people to work in and they couldn't have made me feel more welcome. And like, that's, that's, that's really, really, uh, appreciated. 
you've done such a crazy mixture of types of sets and types of movies in scale from, you know, we talked to you about Dope Sick last time. We talked to you about Dope Sick. We talked about Midsummer, mm-hmm. which we, we got to talk about Ari Aster in a little bit again, by the way. Which is a new movie that just came <laughs> out. But we'll get, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, but then you've done, you've done like Maze Runner, you've done Narnia, you've done this. Does it ever get like, like after doing this now, like, do you ever kind of lean one way or the other? Like, I prefer to do that. Or do you like kind of the mix of going back and forth from such drastically different types of projects? It's another, it, it, it's it's interesting, man. I think for me, you know, having the opportunity to do a variation of things kind of keeps it keeps it interesting, keeps the challenge alive. You know, I like feeling kind of stretched, and it's also it's all learning opportunities. You know, mm-hmm. like whatever genre, whatever medium, whatever size. Like, I feel like I'm always learning something new through those experiences and working with different filmmakers. And you know, what I w- work from learning with uh sorry what i what i learned from working with Catherine bigelow you know uh in comparison to what i you know learned working with barry jenkins or, or someone like ari like you know these are people that i really admire and i i'm in a position where i can really kind of have my notebook out and and you know really kind of take stock of, of what they do well and, and carry it forward and um each time you you work on something i think you walk away with just that little bit more knowledge that you can apply the next time and it sounds kind of cheesy but every day is a school day you know when you're when you're working on a film set mm. and um i think the moment it feels like you know there's nothing left to learn or you know then then yeah I'd, maybe i'd hang it up but like definitely definitely not thinking about it now <laughs> it is, i mean it is a crazy mix like you you get those smaller projects you get those different things and you get this and you're walking around. like there's people crawling around like animals next to you with mocap suits on it's like, yeah exactly <laughs> tennis balls shit right. like that. Yeah, yeah yeah right this had a whole host of like new challenges to it you know mm-hmm. uh, and and like cgi interaction on on the scale that i hadn't really kind of known before kind of only really dipped my toe in that regard so mm-hmm. um it was very cool oh and jillian told us a cool or told me a cool story right before you came in um jillian's our pr person she's mm-hmm. like you got here you were downstairs sorry that banging that's next door they're doing something crazy oh, no. uh but they she told me that you arrived here uh somehow people knew you were here right. and you got mobbed outside and jillian is like trying to like like save you and be like here he has to go he has to go and she said you stayed there and he's like no i want to sign everyone's autograph and I, I love that because I'll, it's not like a crazy often thing that you get a star that's like just that into making sure everyone gets like their time or space, but like they're, oh, they're there. You know what I mean? That's nice of you, man. I mean, I, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I, I, yeah, it's, it's funny. I mean, I, uh, I'm really grateful for, for the, the, you know, the people who support these films and, and the Marvel fans kind of making them what they are. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some people out there maybe selling them on the internet. Oh yeah. Funny, and they have <laughs> no idea who I am. Like, who can I sign this out possible. to? And you're like, they're like eBay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my name. Yeah. Just my bank account. Just put it, <laughs> sign it to my bank account. Um, but, uh, no, you know, like honestly, one of the coolest things about this experience has been like seeing little kids in cosplay. Yeah. You know, and like mm. I met a kid in a mini Adam Warlock costume oh, the other day at a premiere like that kind of stuff means the means the world you know what's cool about warlock is uh and this is something i didn't i don't know what i expected about the character going into the movie but he's essentially a, a giant baby man a, a big baby man there's an <laughs> element of that yeah did, for sure did, did you have um any inspirations for the characters so to speak because i was trying to think of like in my head I'm like who would i even compare it to there's like a lot of like thick british characters i would um like bully characters if that makes sense right. where it's like they had like kind of that air of like where's mommy where's mommy? like right but i couldn't nail it down um, you know, I think something that James and I were exploring with this introduction of the character is the fact that this is Adam in his infancy. And mm-hmm. so he is kind of mentally kind of childlike, at least at the beginning of the movie. And, and, uh, physically there's kind of a, a I guess like a paradox there or, or, or a bit of a dichotomy. Um, and then in a kind of relatively short arc, what we tried to do is kind of show signs of his maturity and then mm-hmm. him maturing and evolving and developing a moral compass, you know, deciding which side of the line he wants to be on as far as good and evil is concerned, right and wrong. And by the end of the movie, you kind of get a better sense of like who Adam will be going forward. I, yeah. I hope. And, oh, yeah. um, and, and I'd love the opportunity to kind of evolve him more. And, um, you know, inspiration wise, it was just quite a human you know, experience. It was a, it was a sort of human and relatable kind of self-development journey, you know, mm-hmm. of just being a young person trying to orientate yourself and, and navigate the world you find yourself in. We, uh, you, you mentioned kind of exciting to see where he's going to go. Um, no spoilers here, but, but I, I don't think it takes a genius to know that this is not a one-off character in the MCU. It's, it's a, it's a massive character who, it's kind of shifted around for what you normally would see in the comic, especially like the Infinity Gauntlet and the Infinity Saga. 
do you know, and I know you can't say much, but like, do you have an, an idea of, of what you're doing next with this character? Is it kind of wait and see? Because it's an odd thing where James Gunn, the Guardian's like, this thing's wrapped, but now you're kind of just thrown out into that open world of Marvel. Yeah, I, I have to be honest. I, I really, really mean this. I have absolutely zero idea. Tomorrow the news is going to break into the <laughs> Adam Warlock. <laughs> and I say that because I'm hoping that tomorrow they will announce. Yeah. The, yeah. It may, yeah. I believe you, but this may be it, though. <laughs> if it does happen, I will still believe you have our words. Yes, listen, if that happens, I'm writing you both and thanking you uh, <laughs> okay. sincerely. No, I, yeah, I really, really don't know. Um, you know, I, I genuinely feel so lucky to have had this be my introduction, you know, just to, to have it kind of under James's guidance, um, you know, uh, to have like Kevin be so kind of supportive and, and all the, all the guardians also just kind of like welcome me in, um, that that's been really, really lovely. Um, but, but what is on the horizon? I, I do not know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> this is something a lot of people have made a big deal about, um, I guess your, your beef up, Right. So to speak, how brutal is the MCU diet workout plan? Because we've asked this to other Marvel actors too. Because like we just imagine there's a handler everywhere you go that just has a taser, and like you look at a donut, donut the wrong way. Yeah. yeah, that's so funny. I would have got tased a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, I probably would have attempted that a lot if, uh, if uh, there'd been cookies around. But no, you know, I was really lucky. I I got to work with a, a team of really really uh, talented people who helped me out uh, enormously um, and helped me do it in a way that was safe and natural and protected my mental and physical health kind of long term, which is important when you're kind of, you know, sort of testing your body in that respect. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just gave it my, my best shot. You know, I was fortunate that I'd, I'd been um, working out for a number of years um, and kind of, you know, a couple of roles previously, I, I tried to kind of put on a bit of size and, and, and develop a bit of muscle for that. So I wasn't kind of starting from from scratch, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then when Marvel, uh, the Marvel job came my way, uh, and and I started kind of auditioning, um, I was kind of in the ballpark, uh, you know, physically, and I just kind of ramped up the intensity of things. Um, and uh, a guy called Ben Carraway uh, designed my whole program. He was like my head my head trainer. Daryl Richards is one of my other trainers, and then um, Aaron Deer was my nutritionist. And um, it was. Uh, it was it was really really you know helpful to have all that support and and Chris uh, Chris's chef um, uh, Chris was kind enough to kind of um, make Chris's amazing chef uh, available uh, to me during the, the shooting and pretty shout nice. out yeah. Chef Patricia she's incredible and um, you know she she made a massive difference. I've seen his Instagram videos of his meals and they they look great. Uh, Jeff brought up a great idea too. It would be funny if um, Adam Warlock like one of his defining traits in future movies is that he's just a big foodie. You work it into the plot yeah, somehow. Don't worry about it. He's like a really pretentious foodie. I'm so down. I'm so down. Adam sending his compliments to the chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 100. I 100 am down for that. You, uh, yeah. And also, it's like when we talked to you, too, it's not like you you were like a slug slithering into the interview. Like you were still, <laughs> like you definitely like you beefed up. It's not like you know you were like like all dumpy in the last. That's time. the worst like, thing about the internet. They'll be like, <laughs> "Wow, this guy isn't like a dressed down dork like he was in We Are the Millers." What like they don't seem to differ that from reality, like what you actually would normally look like. I think something that gets lost on the internet is context, and it was interesting seeing people take a photo of me when I was nineteen years old, <laughs> and a photo of me when I'm twenty nine. And then, like, how did this happen? What? Yeah, exactly. Before and after? Overnight. What a glow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He yeah, got was... older? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, that, that is, that's an interesting one. Uh, speaking of physical things, though, you definitely are a, a, a makeup character. To what extent, though? How long are you in the chair? Mm, uh, yeah. Maria Black, well, we asked Maria Black over to have a, ask a question to you. To you. So this is from, from her, her. And that was it. She's like, how long was he in the chair? Oh, yeah. who, who asked me this? Maria Bacalova. Maria did? Yeah. Oh, that was funny. Um, so... First of all, incredible makeup team. Lexi and Lou uh, were, were the folks looking after me and, and their whole crew, uh, Scotty and everyone else, just amazing. I think they broke the record on this movie for most visual effects makeup applications in a movie ever. Oh, wow. Formerly, a title formerly held by the, the Grinch, I believe. Wow. wow. And the Hoover wow. was huge. That's oh, fair. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so Jim that's Jim Carrey punching air somewhere. Yeah. He's like, Damn. Yeah, 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 exactly. Ron Howard, yeah. Yeah, and I could tell I was not in the chair as long as, as Jim was uh, from, what, from what I hear. But so, yeah, my, my makeup, makeup and hair combined. Hair was done by, by Cassie and Steph, who were incredible. Makeup and hair combined, it was like under two hours, maybe oh, two hours. Dave Bautista just grew, just so oh pissed. He had the gosh. full body paint. I know, and like, and, and <laughs> I mean, Dave, Dave, excuse me, Dave had um, a much kind of longer makeup job, yeah. and I know that, um, 
I know that like Karen too, and mm-hmm. and uh, and and yeah, I mean the Gamora makeup too, like uh, Zoe's is is pretty intense. So. Karen had a very funny tweet where she was like, "I forgot." <laughs> Did you see this? She's like, um, oh, "I yeah. forgot." And a day of shooting that she had a uh, couples therapy. So she's in the middle of a couples therapy zoom with like her and her partner and just the therapist and she's in full <laughs> nebula makeup. It's so funny. <laughs> it's only that's, down to the neck. And it's just so, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's that's funny that, that Pratt can he just gets the roll of the set. And Pratt, it's a little tucked up here and there. And <laughs> just walks in. There. Yeah. 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 And just looks <laughs> wonderfully <laughs> handsome. <laughs> yeah. right. like, uh, we'll give you a little hair curl here. Uh, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. And you're good. You're good to go. You're ready to save the world. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's a Marvel hero or villain that you want to go toe to toe with as Adam? <laughs> if, if there's one, it's hyper, like a completely hypothetical. You can pick anybody you want. I got to tell you, I think one of the best uh, villain performances ever is from Chuck Woody Awuji in this he movie. He was so good. Unreal. He's unbelievably good as the high evolutionary. And I kind of like the idea that like Adam and the high evolutionary like have some kind of unfinished business, you know? Um, and like that would be maybe fun to like go toe to toe with with him as someone who is kind of like you know in part my creator so mm. that would be that would be cool that was great we were so excited when he got cast in it too because we loved him in peacemaker yeah. like he's such he's perfect in this like why would he not have killed that man he was good he's an yeah. extraordinary actor maybe the most hateable villain i can remember for like the last decade like oh yeah, yeah. he's, he's det- uh, right off the top of the movie he's just detestable just the yeah. way yeah it, wait, yeah it's great and in real life he's lovely oh it's always heard too. so like you know <laughs> you, you know that performance is good yeah. What uh, do you, you, is there a hero you want to team up with? Um, oh, hero wise, um, I've always loved the Hulk. Um, I've always loved that character, and uh, I think it's such a kind of like complex hero too. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be fun. And I, and if I am correct, I think dressed like him right now. Crossover, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to audition right now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there is some crossover between Adam and the Hulk, so that mm-hmm. would be that would be very cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, right. No, yeah, the, the James Gunn experience. Oh. What was that like, especially with Marvel? He gets it as much as anybody. It's such a passion for him. And mm. did you maybe throw in a couple hints? I mean, look, you can be in both worlds. You're like, hey, DC, you know where to find me. <laughs> James, is, James is amazing. I, I really don't have enough good things to say about working with James. The experience was so great he's so encouraging and supportive and kind and that that means um as much as anything else you know the fact that he's this wonderful visionary and such a talented creative too is you know super impressive but the fact he's also such a like nice guy with it and cares so deeply about the environment that he creates and you know shouldering crazy responsibilities shooting these movies and now you know heading up a, a, a studio and um he doesn't forget the importance of that environment and, and, you know, the people that he's in, in charge of ultimately having a good time and, and feeling supported. And that's, that's why I really got a lot of love for James. Yeah. I think you see that too, with like all the, the main, like you're saying that like the legacy cast members that stood up for him after he got dismissed at first and then came back, like right. they love him and right. like people and everyone that we've interviewed that's worked with him too. They all love him like, like crazy. He's a really good dude. He has uh, an accident to let it slip. Who's playing Superman. You have like, <laughs> not on like the carpet or anything. He isn't, he hasn't, he's, he's a, he's a master of like teasing things and then, you know, retaining information. <laughs> and then you know um he could probably undo your like curse that you guys have yeah. on the show. like <laughs> yeah. he's probably got some kind of wand that he can wave and undo that which is weird because we used to be the reverse curse because we got jk simmons cast essentially we did yeah. that that was just us we got him <laughs> cast in uh the second spider-man movie we had him read wow. we, i wrote him a whole script as j jonah jameson like a, a, two years before he, the movie came out and he read it off everyone like went super viral like all this stuff and then he got in it so maybe we'll have you read some lines of Superman. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's that's <laughs> hilarious. That's so wild. And he's so great, J.K. Simmons. I know he's awesome. We were just talking about Whiplash the other day. Um, yeah. You got to ask the GQ question. Yeah, we 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 talked about your. It's what's one of the better like GQ interviews. We actually didn't get to ask this question last time, and, and I'm two years later. I got to ask it. It's about. Are you still a wired headphones guy? <laughs> I <laughs> wearing them now. I, guess. I, was, looking, I was looking at yeah. our old notes from our last. These interview. Are my, I brought these in. Yeah, <laughs> they're not from we, the studio. Yeah. We 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 talked about a bunch of stuff from like just your various interview interviews and stuff online. And it was one thing I didn't get to ask. Was like, and now even two years later, so it's even more pressing. Are you still mm. are you still a wired guy? That's so funny. You know what? I saw someone with wired headphones the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, 
Oh my gosh. And I like, I thought it was just amazing to see it out in the wild, you know? You're one of us. Um, yeah. Um, I, I've, I've gone wireless. I've mm-hmm. gone wireless. They're so commonplace now that like, yeah, I, you know, I was one of the last, one of the last bastions of the wireless, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, the, the, the wired headphones, but I have, I have transitioned. I'm now in the future. Eventually they'll become like, um, cool and retro and right. everyone's going to want to have wired headphones again. Oh yeah. It's going to be like a Walkman. Or yeah, something, yeah, exactly. Just, or like records. Are, like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a, a coworker, KB. He got bullied out of using wired headphones like a year or two Used ago. Them for years. Oh. And he now loses one pair of AirPods every few weeks. Yeah, see, this oh, is because, the problem. See, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem I feel for him. I know what he's going through. So, so we need to talk. Ari, did you see Bo is Afraid? So I'm trying to see Bo is Afraid today. Today? Oh, no, I'm wow. trying to see it today. Um, and my friend Archie Medekwe is in it. Um, and I'm, I hope that's not a spoiler, um, but uh, I'm very excited. Joaquin's one of my favorite actors. Ari is one of my favorite filmmakers, so I'm excited. And I want to go and support my friend Archie. Oh, dude, it is. It is unbelievable. It's like one of the most imaginative movies I think I've ever seen in my life. It is crazy. I've heard it's wild. It's, it's like a... a, a, a <laughs> wild? Yeah. wild? I'm not even sure wild is in that, the right... That's an understatement. Yeah. Realm. yeah it's, right. I mean, we love we love Midsommar. We love Hereditary. This is, it's, this is just... Totally like, different. It's crazy. It, it is... I, I bet you'll share this take too. It's one of those ones you, you walk out of a movie like that. If you truly love movies, love every type of movie, you go, that, that may never happen again. Like, yeah. like wow. if you're thankful that you saw it, whether you loved it or hated it, like no matter what, and I'm sure that's exactly what he wants you to feel. Yeah. You're like, that movie doesn't ever get made. It got mm. made. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's like a kaleidoscope in his brain. Like that's what the movie is. It's like insanity. Anything he thought of made its way onto the screen. And that's just, it's beautiful. That's a really good way of putting it. Cause from the the trailer gives me that impression. It's a, it's a Mm -hmm. kind of psychological kaleidoscope. It's crazy. Um, all right. We want to do with you. We didn't get a chance to do this with you last time. I think we did six pack of movies with you last time. Okay. Now we'll do a six pack of pure questions. Okay. Uh, the first of which being what's a role that you auditioned for really, really wanted, but didn't get. Oh my gosh. How long have you got? (laughs) Can I do a 12 pack of those? <laughs> Just a 12 pack of answers for that question. Um, a role that I auditioned for that I didn't get. Um, oh man. I feel bad. Cause I, I like there's scenarios where I like know the people who did get it. And then we, I like, so I don't want to sound like I, you know, we always do this. And the answer is usually like, sometimes the actor will defer and be like, but they did it. And it was amazing. That can always be the case, but you could still have which watched is it. Nearly always. A, I, listen, they made the right decision when they didn't <laughs> pick me. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. Um, like Pratt, for example, we talked to um, uh, Jake Johnson, and like he was the last cut for Andy Dwyer in Parks and Recreation, oh, and so no Pratt got way. that right ahead of him. Wow. Yeah. Um, I. I mean, honestly, I'm just cycling through. There are so many. Um, I really wanted to do um, the internship. Um, and, uh, it was a chance to work with, uh, Vince Vaughn and Wilson. Mm-hmm. I'd auditioned, um, and I bombed my audition so hard. Oh. I flew out to LA in the screen test. I was three scenes in and I thought done. And I went, thanks so much. Thanks for seeing me. <laughs> All the best. And they said, oh, the, the fourth scene. And I said, sorry. And they said, there's a, there's a fourth scene. Yeah. I did not realize Vince Vaughn, like just turns over his page. side to the fourth scene. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They gave me like 20 minutes to learn the fourth scene oh, no. like while I was outside. Oh. Meanwhile, the actor who gets the role goes comes right after. in and I have to listen to him crushing next door. <laughs> Everyone erupting into laughter. Where I'm like nervously trying to learn the fourth scene in like 20 minutes. Max Magala. He's yeah. amazing. Very such fun. a talented dude. He crushed it. I could never have done the job that he did in it. And so they made the right decision, but it was a humbling moment in my career. For <laughs> sure. you, and then you had to go in after him and do the fourth scene. And then I had to like crawl back in with my tail between my legs, give this terrible, you know, half baked version of scene four and totally underwhelmed Vince Vaughn and everyone else in that room. That's amazing. Uh, who's a director that you're dying to work with? You've always worked so many talented ones. Like it's crazy already, but what's one that you're like, I would love to have that experience i really want to work with lynn ramsey oh wow Um, yeah she's unbelievable unfortunately for me she makes 
masterpieces and only very sparingly like she she takes a number of years in between her films and it's a reason because they're so brilliant so her movies are kind of few and far between but they're gold and uh i think she's phenomenal so she's she's definitely you I've got a, again, a, a long list a crazy mix sorry like you no. you've you you've hit the duo which is one of my favorite directing stories is you were directed by west ball you work with Barry Jenkins and Underground Railroad. They were roommates at Florida State together. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a cool duel that you were. Were they not- roommates? I didn't even know yeah. that. They were the film together even- at Florida State. Yeah. That's wild. I was I was very lucky to to work with both of those guys um in, in very different projects. Um yeah. And 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 you know, truthfully, Barry had been someone who was kind of on my bucket list of people to work with. So I'm very mm-hmm. lucky that I got to do that. He's crazy talented. And he's he also part miss. of it's, probably it's the best Hollywood power couple in the entire world. Him and his wife are insanely talented. That's awesome. Um, what has been your weirdest fan interaction so far? A oh wow. Um I was using the bathroom. Always the bathroom. See? Every go. single time we ask this, it's always the bathroom. Using the bathroom. <laughs> I was at a urinal. <laughs> always. And a gentleman asked me to list some of the things I'd been in. Um, <laughs> And you can't do that. I you said, gotta know yeah. if you're gonna do the bathroom approach. Yeah. yeah. And also I can't answer that without sounding like a real bleep. Mm-hmm. Uh I don't know if you can swear on the platform. Swear. Uh like, without sounding like an asshole. Mm-hmm. So I didn't list any of the things I've been in. I didn't want to like turn into Troy McClure and be mm-hmm. like, you might remember me from such thing. Like I didn't, I didn't do that, <laughs> at least of all in the bathroom. So I said, Oh, I don't know, man, I'm an actor, I've done I've done a few things. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what you've watched. And then he went, I know what it is, Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> no way no and i was like how do i explain that that character's animated <laughs> that it came out in 1996 what a, what a piece of shit <laughs> oh my god but that was that was interesting he was very like sweet three years old like- yeah but it was just i think he was just a bit discombobulated yeah. and i was also urinating at the time so i was a bit discombobulated by the question and anyway we, we ended up taking a photo once hands had been washed and <laughs> All of that kind of stuff. Did you but, part with like, hey, by the way, you should probably rewatch that movie, yeah, maybe a yeah. little closer. Yeah, and also it wasn't motion capture. Yeah, it's clear. <laughs> at no point was I involved in the making. But you know, of he that posted film. that on like his MySpace or something. It was like, just met up with Sid from Toy Story. <laughs> exactly, shit's crazy. Yeah, quite, quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> ask him the. Uh, you got to ask him the the, the the choose one for the last one here. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got to choose. You got to choose one of these things. You either automatically win the Oscar. For let's say best actor or whatever you want, okay. let's say, or Erling Holland instantly transferred to Arsenal right now, right now, while man is what one point up. Well, he- here's the here's the thing, I- I- and I'm sorry to say, and that's no disrespect to the academy, but Erling Holland <laughs> scores goals for fun. But here's the other thing, and this is why I'm being hesitant about this answer is. I feel such an intense sense of rivalry with Man City, which is a position I did not think Arsenal would be. And I didn't think (laughs) I'd be in a position to feel a sense of genuine rivalry with Man City. But right now, like, like I'm praying that Leeds will beat Man City tomorrow. You know, I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm really sending out prayers, like (laughs) hoping for miracles. That guy is so phenomenal. He's, he's made single handedly almost made Arsenal's chances of winning the league very very slim now unfortunately we were riding high for a while and i was feeling really good about it i have given you a non-answer i just i I just it just it just sucks to like i can't as much as i want him on my team i Mm -hmm. i really i don't dislike the guy don't i'm not saying that but i just feel such a bitter sense of rivalry right now that i can't like take one of your biggest rivals essentially yeah exactly take one of my biggest rivals but like who am i kidding in the yeah. summer if he made that crazy decision <laughs> and we found the money to be able to pay his wages i would love early, early we, still, we still got to get you on a stream like troops, with, yeah. with troops and za we got to get oh, you on i'd love them. to because troops is a big gunner yeah. right yeah oh yeah yeah so, and then za, who's probably right around the corner they yeah we gotta we hit, is I, he arsenal too he's massive arsenal mm-hmm. yeah uh, oh troops. yeah i had i had uh troops with a bat with a good line i think uh the other day i came in the room while he was recording uh, or right before he was recording, and I, and I was like, "Yeah, you know they call me Arsenal because I start on top and I finish second. And he's just like, so "Yeah, awesome. true. Troops, Arsenal troops is, is another world. Troops. He's the yeah. best." Uh, yeah. Last thing here before we wrap, we mm-hmm. we got absolutely just steamrolled by your previous interview. We we had a two year yeah. long payoff. We were gonna we we didn't taunt you, but after our interview wrap, we were like, "Hey, we know you're big milk bar milk bar pie guys. We're gonna go get some." 
but they just they just got him for you. But we we got you some as well. Oh, you heroes! Oh my gosh! Yeah. Now Convenient to go bag. Yeah, you absolute legends. <laughs> oh, I really appreciate the that. The not as good, but I'm glad no. we get you some. It's three of you. The other guys, they 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 ate like a a hot. Well, they they That's tried right. on a whole pie, and they did so with some of the biggest knives I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I appreciate that safety precautions are being observed in this oh, part of the building. Zero. Oh, there's yeah. none over there. Because that no, they, they were eating it straight off the knife. I was really worried about <laughs> s- some kind of accident unfolding. No, thank you so much for this. And shout out to Christina Tosi, the Guardians after killed this. with pie knife. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. <laughs> brutal way to go. Chokes on milk bar pie. No, thank you so much. Of yeah, course. Thank you, man. Uh Guardian, I mean, what do we really have to do a, a, a pitch for Guardians 3? Go see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Thank you so much Please for talking. Hopefully it's not a two-year wait again. It's been a blast. Hopefully not. Hopefully we all get some great job opportunities <laughs> since we've just done an interview. <laughs> yes. Tomorrow. You're going to get a call like in an hour. So hopefully good fortune. Scorsese's going to be like, how about this Will Poulter guy? <laughs> Tell me about it. If he knows who I am, I'd be shocked. Shocked a bit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Cheers. All right. Big thanks to Will Poulter. Excited, hopefully, to have him back in at some point soon. Um, fun answers. I, I liked. I liked him admitting how many movies, movie roles he did not get. He's like just straight up, like I just yeah everything. How much time you so got? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, the final, I guess, Guardians movie ever made. Um, which I have, I have some. I have some things to say about that. Um, it stars the, mostly the same cast. No, there's a Yandu flashback in this, but for the most part, it's the Guardians we we know and love. Uh, Peter Quill back, Gamora, Drax, Nebula, Groot, Mantis, Rocket. Um, adding new characters, uh, Sean Gunn, James Gunn's brother, Craglin is back, but in a significantly more expanded role than he has been in past movies. Um, Cosmo. Cosmo, yes, Maria Bakalova, uh, the dog. Linda Cardellini plays her second Marvel character, by the way. Yeah. She plays Lila the Otter. Oh. And Judy Greer was one of the, I think, the pig, like the war pig thing. Um, yeah. A couple others, too. Nathan Fillion plays she, Nathan Fillion. He just plays himself in a big suit. <laughs> that got a, uh, that got a big Stallone. laugh. Yeah. Uh, and then, I, how do I... It's it's Chikure Uwuji, right? As I say his name. Yes, I'm gonna go with yes. I'll pronounce right. He plays a high evolutionary. Very we are cool. The, we are the worst authorities on that, though. Yeah, yeah. A very cool, angry villain, and like we mentioned, Will Poulter mm-hmm. back as Adam Warlock. Um, Chris Pratt, two lead roles in in two massive box office movies right now. Pretty crazy at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, him and Zoe Saldana, just in general, own the box office. Yeah. Uh, Guardians three. It's it's the final hurrah. Set not long after uh, Endgame and Infinity War, I believe this. I saw a timeline thing today. This turns the page to 2026 in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, obviously, Endgame is, is set in 2025. Um, I believe that that's the way it. this takes place into 2026. That's just what I saw today. Um, First one we loved. Ken Jack gave it 100 out of 100. I think the first one is a top five Marvel movie ever made. I think it's like one of the best comic book movies ever made. Um, I think it's the best, probably the best non-Avengers. Um, for you, it's your number one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but for me, the first Guardians is the best non-Avengers movie. And honestly, in terms of rating, I have it tied with Infinity War and Endgame. But I do prefer Infinity War and Endgame. Uh, the second one... I liked a fair amount. You liked it a little more than me. You gave it an 89. I gave it an 85. Gooch, I'll get your scores here in a second where you would have them retroactively at. I like this movie quite a bit. I liked it the least out of the three, though. Mm. Um, I have – there's I, – I really enjoyed it. As a Marvel fan, I loved it. And it was a breath of fresh air with what we've, what we've had lately. And I've liked a bunch of the new Marvel movies. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind Ant-Man. I really enjoyed Doctor Strange, like the more we've like come from Doctor Strange. Thor Love and Thunder, the opposite. I've liked that probably less. Um, I do like Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness um, a fair amount. But this movie, I think, falls still short of what we've gotten 
from the best of the best in Marvel. I, I give it an 84 out of 100. It, it's the third out of these three. I think the idea that this needed to wrap up was a massive mistake. Like, I, I just, I think we rushed too much. It's a lot. There's a lot of fucking movie here, and I think it's a little muddy at the end of the movie, where it's just like too much going on. You're just, and I won't spoil it right now. I'll get more into it in a second. Really enjoyed it. Really fun. But if I'm like pulling back and thinking about it, I give it an 84. Um, we'll get into it. But I I do think that it's, we kind of square peg round hold the end of this franchise. Where it just feels like like a lot of felt earned, a lot of the emotion, but some of it I'm like, man, we, you could have used a little more story with these characters. Like it just feels like their story being wrapped up just doesn't fully work for me. So 84 out of 100, Ken and Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with you in that. I think it's not uh, like for me anyway. I don't like it as much as one. I'd say I'm like on the same level as two, but for different reasons. And again, it's very hard mark. It's like 89 out of 100 for me. Um, and I think what's good about this is like the second one, there was a level of like a very much like earned emotion that led into the character with ego. Like I really, really liked like him and uh, them to having a storyline. I like in this one how they kind of transition that and let everyone else kind of have more personality. Does that makes sense. Like we got a lot of, I think, really great stuff out of obviously Rocket. Like his enti- he was basically the main emotional driving force of this entire movie. Um, I think he was great. Um, but also we got more like Drax, like him transit, like being like, Oh, I'm actually, that's what I was born to be dad, not a destroyer and all that great moment for him. Uh, and also like Mantis and everyone else too. Like all that was great. I'd like that. They didn't end it with like Gamora being like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be back with Peter Quill. I think that would have been a huge mistake as well. I do like how they kept separated. Um, but at the same time, there's definitely cons. It felt like you're saying muddied, rushed, little jumpy, especially I think. I agree with you to like in the very closing 10 minutes of the movie, definitely very rushy, but the first act specifically felt very jumpy, especially just like in the editing room, I guess like the scenes are just like talk, 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 flip, 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 flip. And like that part felt a little off to me. Like they were trying to just not like get this over with, but like they could have done a better job of stitching shit together. Um, I think the music was really good. Like they're always good. Like this would be the best music of any other sub Marvel uh, franchise, but this is probably the weakest music of the, of the three. Um, but I do like the, the music. Did, they made. Do you think the music didn't feel natural at times? It, not in the same way that it did with the first two Guardians. Like when the chain hits in Guardians Two, right? Fucking incredible. When he walks into Redbone in the very first one, sets the whole tone. Like all of that felt like it wove in better. Um, I'd like to again like the choices. I just don't like. Um, I don't think they were as strong as the other two. Uh, but at the same time, like I think the heart in this movie was 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 awesome with Rocket getting his entire story fleshed out using animals is such a cheat code it's like the biggest cheat code in the entire world but fuck man it had me i know it had me tearing up and i think that high evolutionary on his own was one of the one of the best villains marvel's had as far as from an acting performance and as as also just from like you are one-dimensionally hating this character there's no and like we always sometimes would call that like a problem, like because we like Killmonger, we like Thanos, we like people who have motivations that we might be able to see in a more three dimensional way. But I do like having him where it's just I one dimensionally despise this human more than anything, and he's being acted to the fucking moon by. And I'm not even going to bother. I go, you give it the pronunciation. I trust your pronunciation. Chikudu Uji, yeah. I, yeah. I think I, I what I really like about that character, and this is not much of a spoiler. Uh, maybe it is. Eh, no, I don't think it is. He he is very like the the scale of his villain villainry is very like world endy big bad guy, but that's not his goal. Like I like that you can have this villain who has the size of a all powerful. I can end the world, but that's not. He's like just trying to do his own thing somewhere else in the galaxy. Like I yeah. like that. And I also liked how, and this is something that I think was very impressive, one of the most impressive things in the movie, because like with the stage we're at with Marvel right now, everything, you know, it just keeps expanding from like, hey, we have a guy stealing VCRs or whatever or like yeah. Marvel to like now, like it's every villain needs to be someone that can destroy a galaxy or some shit. Like as big of the scale as, as this Guardians movie is, it still feels like a very intimate story. You know what I mean? Like we're just like very intimately focused on the guard within the Guardians thing. Like everything's like intro, but like it's not. Yeah, you have the big ass Borg cube that they need to blow up and all that shit. But the story itself feels way more intimate. Um, the other, the only other con I really had was like 
didn't really have as much like charm, I thought, as the first two movies. Um, and that's just like, I think a, a part of that being those two first movies were like very much like comedy focused. Like this one's definitely way more emotional. And that's like started right from the jump with the rocket stuff. Uh, so it's tougher to kind of get infuse that humor. But when the humor did hit, it was it was really good. Um, I, I I feel bad, though, for Will Poulter and how they handled Warlock's situation. Really? Like, this is like he's a character, right, that they teased at the end of the, of the another Guardians movie. That's like when you get teased in a post credit, like you're going to be a big thing. Right. I think he introducing him like we were talking about with him like a um like he's not mature yet he's still growing all these things that's great i think getting like two him getting like two scenes and three lines and like him going from yeah i'm bad guy working for mom to now i'm now one of the good guys i don't think he got enough shine and i think if i could have if i had could have had it in a way where he got his introduction in a different movie and we were able to just focus more and get more lines and more material out of the high evolutionary i would have preferred that um that said i do think every time that he spoke as adam warlock i was laughing i'm like this is cool i just like i wanted either more or none of him if that makes sense and, and then either more of the high evolutionary or as much as the high evolutionary as possible um but that would be my only other con see for me I, that's not who i would have cut i would have if i had to pick one character to cut out here it would have been sean gunn i i some Kraglin action? Yeah, the Kraglin stuff, I just was not. Every time it we cut to it and his, you know, journey to dealing with his loss of... Um, what Yondu. Was yeah, Yondu. I just, There's only like two scenes, though. Yeah, just one of those things where I just didn't need it. Um, I, I have, My score is a little, I think, one point... I'm at an 85. One point higher than you, a few points lower than you, but I think I'm the highest on this. Uh, I think this is Marvel's best since Infinity War. This is an infinity war. Yeah, but I'm lower on in game than you all. I, I, wow. I like in game, but I, I have a lot of issues with it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is, it just has the secret sauce that Marvel has just been, it just been missing. It's just like fun at the theater and you leave and you're not like, you don't have a bad taste in your mouth. There's not like a uh, damn. I wish that was better. This was exactly what I wanted. Went in. I don't know, maybe my expe expectations have been lowered because of the last few years, but goddamn, did I have a good time. Just a great time at the theater. Um, all three of these movies, I'm at, I think the first one would be an 87 for me. And then Guardians 2 and Guardians 3 are right at 85. So as a franchise, as a standalone trilogy, this is the MCU's best. Oh, yeah. I think without debate. Um, maybe Captain America, Captain America is right there, but. I think you ask anybody Captain America. Yeah. Some, Captain, Captain America. Right. Some people are lower on. I'm lower on Civil War. I am too. High, I'm higher on the first one. Oh, um, first I, one's stinky. No, I love the first one. It, it's got some that, great. Just the like, first one is like I, I would say I preferred movie garbage. Not like it's not awful, but it's like so cheesy. Yeah, but I love that cheese. I preferred both Spider Mans. I honestly preferred Shang Chi over this, and I like I liked Wakanda Forever quite a bit. I do like this. I do like this more than Doctor Strange. I like it more than Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, I like it more than Ant Man. I and we'll, we'll, spoiler time now. And I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I just the funny thing is, is, I actually do think it's plagued by an issue that Marvel has been having for two years, two or three years now. And I think it's when they have to wrap something up, they kind of struggle. I think only Loki's really done that well. Like I think Wandavision had a tough end to their series. I think the series have had a hard time truly closing the book on something and i don't know if it's partly because james gunn has to go to dc now but i just think there's too much going on again spoiler the end of the movie the fucking you got the kids you got adam warlock you got rocket storyline with the animal like there's just so much going on that it just feels a little muddied and you don't get and it is an more intimate story you don't get that kind of intimate close and i like Gamora's storyline like doesn't feel very satisfying to me. Like I, I just I, I think that's a storyline that needs another movie. And again, I'm not sure like they seem to be done with this. And that's a problem that you can't if, if, if that's the case, you have to wrap it up. But I think it plagues the movie a bit where I think if you could have maybe shed some of that stuff. You're able to like like Drax being wanting to be a dad, Nebula and Mantis. Like, there's just so much. I was like, holy fucking shit! Like, this this is a lot of stuff to wrap up at the end here. And I still liked it. Like, it's still earned. 
Like I still really enjoyed it. I had a I had a blast of the movie. But man, I do think like it, the the bummer for me is that like I I think this had the bones to be better than the second one, but I mm. don't think it is because yeah. I don't think it's as fucking like focused. I, think I, I will try to do so much at the end. Yeah, I will agree at the end. Like, do they need to wrap up everybody's storyline? I I think that's where it's like I don't need a wrap. I mean, on. if Zoe Saldana says she's never playing Gamora again, I guess you have to. Yeah, but do you need to wrap it? Can it just be a she's she's gone? You know, this movie is over. Like, I don't know if you need to tell me what she's going to be doing. I don't yeah, need to know. Fair. I don't need to know Mantis is going to find herself or like the the Peter Quill stuff. You got you have to wrap that because it is more or less his trilogy. Even though it's technically not it's wrapping him, I guess. Yeah, like yeah, the, he's the one who's like, I'm back. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, that's the one where I was like, he's going to hang out with his grandpa that we've never heard of before. I thought that was pretty pretty. Now we see him in the first one for ten seconds. Yeah, exactly. Um, he never never heard of like never spoken about ever again. Mm-hmm. Um, I do I do agree that it was a little bit too much there at the end. Um, but outside that, like just the pure fun of it all. I, yeah. I really, oh, absolutely. absolutely. And especially considering it's fun in something that's so dramatic, like, and you, you can look at it in the same way with like black Panther two, where like the bones of that are so like, it's like sad, right? Like, and you can say the same thing with rocket. They're just trying desperately to save him. You're seeing his whole backstory, which is horrifyingly sad. We all like animals and seeing animals getting tortured by this fucking maniac. is just making you piss, but like the humor still cuts in. I think like, Probably 80% at the right time. Not like in the Thor Love and Thunder where it's like, I have cancer. Here's a joke. You know what I mean? Well, it's that, like, that actually, like, remember how critical people were of the second Guardians of that? It, like, it did stop. It, it did. It's one of the bigger offenders of the MCU in terms of like, serious, serious, serious joke. Serious, mm. serious joke. Where I feel like this one, it was a little more, it's almost like he kind of knew that and pulled mm. it back a little bit. I do like, by the way, great placement of Marvel's first fuck. That was that was yes. fantastic. Which, Get in the fucking car. I, I which we said. I was like, I don't know. I'm not gonna. Fun-. And that, but it, it didn't come when I expected it. It was perfect. It was like yeah. it, it was. It was a really. It was. It's that's a good writing moment because it, yeah, it really did a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, again, I I I I I'm only being like devil's advocate negative because like I I feel like because Chris isn't know. here, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's it's. Just because I know, like, like Gucci, I know you loved it. I just I I do think there's some things where I'm like, I just wish it was. Like again, the bones for this to be the bo- for this to be the best MCU thing since the Infinity Saga ended. I think it was right there. Like I, I do think the ro- the Rocket emotional storyline is one of the best things ever done in the MCU. So sorry, like I should really probably said it up top. Like there's my biggest thing. That's like why I like this movie. It really pays off. Like it is fucking emotional. You care about the character more than you ever have, even though you've always cared about Rocket. Like if you like the MCU, you've loved Rocket since the beginning mm-hmm. of Rocket. But like it it works not just in Guardians, it works through his character in Infinity War and Endgame. He's always been kind of a because you've always you, funny enough, whether it was intentional or not, like the most sympathetic you ever seen Rocket was Infinity War and Endgame, right? Like when when he was like really trying to again bring the universe back. Um mm-hmm. so for him, like it uh it, it 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 pays off in a great way that that is worth it. Just like man, again, there's just a lot going on at the end. Craglin, Cr- mm. Craglin, and Cosmo. Um, it just there's just so much, just so much stuff. Cosmo is very funny. I, I did like their back and forth. Very and funny, and yeah. like the fact that it was like she's like they sent me to Russia. <laughs> it's like the Russians sent me into space. They thought I was gonna die. Never called me a bad girl. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. Playing poker or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nathan's Fillion, Nathan Fillion's introduction scene where they talk about like the one friend in the crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is very funny. That, that was, was very awesome. good. Yeah, I saw floated around on Twitter the possibility of a Wooji playing, um, replacing Jonathan Majors. I mean, I know it's the same character or, or same. You can't have the same guy just like for directly back to back. I would fucking love it. I would suspend every bit of disbelief I have to have him play. He, he would have been great, but I don't know if you can now. Or Where has he been hiding? Where have they been keeping this guy? Because dude, he's so good. He was great in Peacemaker. Really good he, in Peacemaker. But he was phenomenal here. Mm-hmm. Like this is. I mean, where would you? I'd have to go through and look at you know all the all the villains throughout. He was the in John Wick too. I mean, is this a top five MCU villain? I mean, he was great. Yeah, dude. I guess I guess people are saying that you could say that that the High Evolutionary is a Kang variant. Yeah, exactly. That would work pretty well. I mean, they haven't even. 
MCU still hasn't commented on the Jonathan Major stuff at all. So who knows yeah. if they're even going to recast him at this point? Yeah. No, apparently, apparently they have made a, made a call. They just haven't said it yet. Oh, okay. They haven't said shit. Okay. I mean, they filmed all of Loki season two, which he that's, would be that's heavily the biggest in. issue, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. We should ask Walter about that, even though he wouldn't be able to say a word about it. <laughs> and uh, back to like the the joke stuff, I can forgive, you know, undercutting scenes with jokes if they're fucking funny. Yeah. And James Gunn is funny. Like his writing is just is it is funny. Like <laughs> it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do feel like this is a bit of a bittersweet moment for Marvel where this is going to uh, what's the audience score? I know it's upper 90s right now. People, the cinema score is high. The audience score is high. This has got to be one of their highest of the phase, if not oh, the far. highest. 95, yeah. So this becomes a bit of a bittersweet moment for Marvel where they get their hit that they've really wanted with audiences. But now James Gunn is leaving to run their rival studio. Mm-hmm. Kind of well, I mean, it also feels like he's he was testing what he could get away with in a comic book movie here. Mm-hmm. He's pushing the boundaries of how dark can I actually go? How much do audiences have a yeah. stomach for? Yeah. I mean, there was some very, like, I would not take a, anybody below the age of what, 10 to see this movie. Uh, that dude does get ripped in half. <laughs> There's I mean, a lot of violence. There's uh, some good violence in it too. That hallway fight I thought was awesome. Yeah. Like, hallway they, they stitched together one take. It was sick. There's some dark shit in here. Yeah. This poor animal. Yeah, Shooting the animal, even though the animal is like anthropomorphic and yeah. robotic. It's like, you're like, oh, fuck dude that mm-hmm. bunny's having a panic attack like yeah behind them like that it was it, rocket ripping his face off yeah good lord yeah, that, I didn't, the when end. they ripped the face off i thought that was gonna be it yeah i was like oh, we're not gonna see it also the the carrot guy got a huge laugh out carrot of guy was so funny carrot, dude carrot guy shit. was very it was very funny <laughs> that I, guy looks like a carrot every every practical design on those like characters and on the uh counter earth was fucking hilarious really good like those pract- i love that they use those practical designs like make yeah. them look like puppets basically and the uh what do you call it? the pictures like the family portraits they had on the wall like doing like that old 90s style also <laughs> Dude, very when he asked for the car and the dad just threw his hands <laughs> yeah, in the air he's like, like god damn it that's another one too this i love moments like this where like he goes to drive the car and i was thinking in my head like how's he gonna know how to drive and then yes. he's like i haven't driven since i, I haven't been on earth since i was eight i was like that's i like it i like that you thought what i was thinking before while i was thinking it or you said it out loud uh, but I love that part that everything encounter earth, dude, really cool. So, I mean, so many characters were at their best here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, rocket, of course, but I think this was easily nebulous best. And there was a very real possibility where Gamora with another writer. I think this is a storyline that not many writers could have handled. Mm-hmm. You got to know her and really know what you're trying to do. I think James Gunn executed that well, like so many other so many other people would have fallen into the trap of just having them get back together. Mm-hmm. But I love that they didn't do that. Like this is a different person. Yeah. yeah. It just is. And I love that Peter had to reconcile with that. Yeah. And <laughs> I did like when he's, he's like, my girlfriend got thrown off from a magic cliff and everyone else got brought back. Not her though. Don't know why. <laughs> She's a dick. <laughs> yeah. This new one's a dick. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think, I think in the end they, they did a, they, they they did a nice job wrapping it up. I think I have my complaints for sure. Um, it's not an easy task to wrap that up as quick as they did. And again, I, I he said he wanted to do a trilogy, but like the door is just closed because of DC now, I guess. So it's just tough. Uh, Wait, what do you mean he wanted to do a? He said he always said like I wanted to make a trilogy. Like it seemed like the trilogy was always his idea, right? Like the, he wanted to do three. Mm-hmm. Um. Wait, so like I, I guess is this wraps in the way that he wanted to. Oh, okay. But I, I think it's it's different where if we're leaving this and he's still part of Marvel and not going to the rival, the door could be open to finish more and maybe you could leave some storylines maybe more open as opposed to closed. But he kind of closed every one. So Yeah. Do you want to talk about those post credits where they did somewhat leave the door open for more Guardians movies, which well, the Guardians are going to be in the MCU. Like, I think that's I. They have to be. It's just a newer group. It's just I it's guess. a newer group that will show up. I'm assuming in crossovers, in Avengers, um, five and six. Like, mm-hmm. I, I I could just see that happening. Yeah, yeah. I I just worry about someone else trying to come in and emulate what yeah. James Gunn has done. Like, I don't know, especially without. 
the main players. Yeah, I mean that yeah. has to be the end of the. I think the Guardians Guardians movies. Like I don't, I wouldn't hate them seeing them in the other team up ones, but I don't want to see them. I think in another with this crew done by a different director. Yeah, but, 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 in, I mean, again, I'm not as much of a comic guy, but I know you know, Rob. Like they. I mean, the Guardians exist in many variations and ways throughout the comics. So it's, you know, I mean, it's somewhat, it would, dude, it's really, they're not, they don't really exist is the funny part. Like, mm. Yeah, I know Rocket, there's a Rocket Raccoon. I, mean, I, had, I had a friend who worked at Marvel when this movie came out. When I worked at the MLB. He worked at Marvel before that. And he was like, honestly, I was not excited for this movie at all. Like, it's, it's one of my least favorite comics. Like, I just, I don't love the Guardians. Like, they're Rocket. not likable. And he was surprised. And he's like, and then I saw the movie. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, they did an amazing job with the movie. Rocket Raccoon was in 10 issues before Guardians came out. Not 10 issues of Guardians, 10 issues across every Marvel Jeez. comic. Like he would just appear on the side. Had some fans, but like he really wasn't a character anyone knew. Yeah. But point being like like there are variations of this team. Like it's not Yeah. I I would love to see Adam Warlock get his own movie versus mm-hmm. trying to do Guardians 4. Like and maybe that's what they'll do. Or know? even just like a few lines in the next team up movie. Like I feel like so I'm saying is like I feel like he deserved more than that, considering the tease, considering just like the the not like Will Poulter's like the fucking Tom Cruise of the universe or something right now, but I feel like he deserved more airtime. Yeah, I, you everything. Also have, he, you also have um, Nova too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about Nova. So Nova, it could be a thing where they show up in Nova. Um, that would make complete sense. Um, there's there, there's there's just a ton of random characters that um captain marvel um dr doom yeah dr doom uh, iron man was in it at one point um oh marvel boy uh, <laughs> uh fuck i think i saw the actor that played dr doom in a in a show recently the and thing I was like, venom adam doom. warlock so mm-hmm. so where yep. where this is the final film of phase 4 right uh, or phase what are, what phase are we on let's see i can't remember there's so many of these movies let's see oh phases. whenever i go to that that fandom website my fucking computer slows down it's been the case forever it's the strangest thing um the phase that we're in right now phase phase four ends with no no this this was phase five. Oh, was so it? this is the first of phase five no, it's the second. Quantumania was the first of Phase 5. Wakanda Forever ended Phase 4. Then the Marvels, Captain America, New World Order, Thunderbolts, and Blade. Okay, so you would have this third, though, post-Endgame. Post-Endgame, I liked Wakanda Forever more, and I liked Shang-Chi. No, fourth, and I liked Spider-Man No Way Home more. Eternals You're still that high on best. No Way Home? I was the lowest on No I was lower on No Way Home than anyone else. People thought that was Wait. the fucking best Marvel movie of all time. There's still people. No way home. I definitely had that very low. There's still people who think that's the uh, that movie. Oh, it's it's written by Reddit. I, I I can't be I can't. It cannot be said that I had it low. I had it I had it lower than I think all three of us. I I I know I was shitting on it. I was no, definitely you had high. an eighty nine. I, I, I was point above you. I think I was I, high. I, I know for <laughs> a fact I had it lowest in podcast because I got a lot of shit for it, and I still like it. I love. I liked it. I liked the movie more than I like this one. I just remember when we reviewed it, I was shitting on it for being like, this is so fan servicey and so this. But yeah, yeah like, it was it was fan servicey the movie. Yeah. No, you gave it 89, I gave it an 88. I, 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 but I, I see, lower that. that's a movie with a lot of shit in it that I think lands better than this one does. Mm-hmm. I think that one handled a lot of shit better than this one handled a lot of shit. I think it was just too much at the end. Mm-hmm. And May's Death was really good. That's a great scene for Mar- for Marvel. Um. So we'll, we'll we'll see what the rest of them. Also, Blade apparently cut out Kit Haring. Did you see that? Really? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Mia Goth. That's we. That's the news we didn't mention. Mia Goth is apparently playing the villain in Blade, yeah. which sounds awesome. Oh, what? see that video I posted of her the oh. other day. It's so oh weird. yeah, you just talking about J Lo. So we got some new first speed. looks at at the next uh, Pearl movie, the next uh, X movie, oh, yeah. Maxine. Maxine. Yeah, Halsey looks so good. Mm. She's so hot. <laughs> Ashley. Ashley, anagram. It's an anagram, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, I don't know. He makes the letters up like Tom. Yeah, Rolf. it's an anagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, that's it. I think next week. I think we have a we have a we have a one week off because of like we're gonna have a podcast. But 
I think I think we have a week off of um like big movie releases because of uh fast coming out. Um there's one movie coming out next week. What's it called? Next week. Um, yeah, it's with Tom Club Holland. The next chapter. Tom Holland? Oh, uh rats, I forget the name. I think the the Russo brothers are directing it. Oh, Cherry, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> We Wait, next week is hypno- we did we did say we were going to do hypnotic with Ben Affleck. Too. Oh, actually, yeah. Now that'll be a very fun one to review. I think hypnotic. it looks so so absurd. We could do Sisu at some point, but that's still not wide. Sisu is so good. It's fucking awesome time. Yeah, Sisu is kind of hard to find here. Yeah, I may be on end of week next week. Mm. I may be on the second half because I don't think I'm gonna be able to be on because I'm I am traveling. We got to prep for. Cup. Fool's Turtle. Paradise with Ken Jong. Then oh, why is Ken Jong? Oh, Charlie Day should be the yeah. Charlie Day. I'm going to hash probably. out our schedule here, but we'll 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 do Fast yeah. Ten the week after. We'll record on that Sunday too. Nights of the Zodiac. Yeah, the old trivia tournament in the office on that following Monday. So we'll do we'll do Fast Ten on on. We'll release it the week after. We'll do all that and and robots maybe. Yes, let's do robots. Oh, robots. It's gonna be the comedy of the on. summer. Like oh, stop! You're Number such a, you're comedy such like a neon. You like your fucking roommate work for neon or something? No, my roommate's a Criterion head. He doesn't really care about neon. He doesn't watch new movies. It's the fucking worst. <laughs> there's there is a there is a new movie. There's a movie that just got a Criterion release that I kind of chuckled at. What was it? Yes, I, I saw one in the email, and I was like, "Why did this get a Criterion release?" Hot Rod. No, it was it's. Fucking, it's in my email. There, there is a new Barry. One of, Barry Jenkins' first movie, Medicine of Melancholy, is getting a a Criterion release. Is pretty fucking awesome. But um, there is a yeah. You're what the fuck was it? Hold I on, saw it and I was like, why is it? Was it Thelma and Louise that got a Criterion? Was that, that I think sense. that's what, yes, Thelma yeah. and Louise got it. I was, that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's not a Criterion. It, it movie. does, but I was I that's was a surprised. Movie. By it. I was like, that's not a Criterion like, movie. I was like, oh fuck, okay. There's just some that you that you see some that you just don't expect. Some other ones that are coming out. There's some where it's just like cinema heads are horny for the people. You know what I mean? Like anything, yeah. David, like Lynch, anything. He could fucking take a shit on a DVD and they'd be like, here's our new <laughs> Criterion release. Like they, there's certain people they just love get the regardless of the colors. actual quality. The three colors box set I got to get. Um. All right. Well, that's it. Um, for Ken Jack and Gooch and Jeff D. Lowe, we'll talk to you next time.